The title of my message tonight, and I'm going to give them a minute there to change it up back there. The mystery and miracle of the Middle East. How many of you know that pretty much every day on the news, the whole eyes of the world are centered on the Middle East right now? So this message is prophetic because it's not going to stop in 2023. It's going to accelerate in 2024. But why is it accelerating? Well, I'm going to read Isaiah 19 and I want you to listen to this carefully. I'm going to read the whole chapter, but don't think that'll be indicative of the length of the sermon. I'm going to read the whole chapter so that you get context. Isaiah 19, verse 1. The burden against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud, and he will come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter at his presence, and the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst. I will set Egyptians against Egyptians. Everyone will fight against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fail in its midst. I will destroy their counsel and they will consult the idols and the charmers, the mediums and the sorcerers. And the Egyptians I will give into the hand of a cruel master. A fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts. The waters will fail from the sea and the river will be wasted and dried up. The rivers will turn foul. The brooks of defense uh, will be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the rushes will wither. The papyrus reeds by the river, by the mouth of the river, and everything sown by the river will wither. That's a tongue twister. The river by the river wither. Be driven away and be no more. The fishermen also will mourn. All those who lament will cast hooks into the river and they will languish who spread nets on the waters. Moreover, those who work in the fine flax and those who weave fine fabric will be ashamed and its foundations will be broken. All who make wages will be troubled of soul. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. Pharaoh's wise counselors give foolish counsel. How do you say to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are your wise men? Let tell Let them tell you now and let them know what the Lord of hosts has purposed against Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools. The princes of Noph are deceived. They've deluded Egypt, those who are the mainstay of its tribes. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst and they have caused Egypt to err in all her work as a drunken man staggers in his vomit. What imagery, wow. Neither will there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail, palm branch or bulrush may do. In that day, Egypt will be like women and will be afraid and fear because of the waving of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he waves over it. And the land of Judah, the land of Judah will be a terror to Egypt. By the way, right now, you know where most of the Palestinian Uh, exiles are fleeing to into Egypt because of Israel invading the Gaza Strip so Judah which is the land of Israel will be a terror to Egypt everyone who makes mention of it will be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts which he has determined against it in that day five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear by the Lord of hosts one will be called the city of destruction I want you to see that in that day five cities in Egypt will speak Hebrew or speak the language of Canaan and swear by the Lord of hosts whoa Sounds like Egypt's going to have a revival. Verse 19, In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign. Somebody say, it's for a sign. This, whatever this altar is, whatever this pillar is, is for a sign. And for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors 
and he will send them a savior and a mighty one and he will deliver them. Then the Lord will be known to Egypt. What? Then the Lord will be known to Egypt and the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and will make sacrifice and offering. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. And the Lord will strike Egypt. He will strike and heal it. They will return to the Lord and he will be entreated by them and heal them. In that day there will be a highway. Oh, listen to me, friend. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian will come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria and the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. Does anybody know where modern Assyria is? It's Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Lebanon, all of those nations. In that day, Israel will be one of the three with Egypt and Assyria a blessing in the midst of the land whoa there's going to be a highway do you see that and the Egypt, look, look at verse 23 again let that sink in in that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria that includes Syria Lebanon uh, Iran Iraq, I mean the Middle East and then Israel and Egypt in that day Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria a blessing in the midst of the land whom the Lord of hosts shall bless saying blessed is Egypt my people and Assyria the work of my hands and Israel my inheritance I want to tell you right now God is going to heal Abraham's broken family. Isaac and Ishmael, I, I, I want you to know <laughs> the Palestinians, the Arabs, the Israelis, the Jews, I believe before this is all over, God is going to heal and restore and bring Abraham's family back, to ever, back together. Just like he told Abraham, in you and your seed will all the nations and all the families of the earth be blessed. And God intends to build a highway of commerce, a highway connecting the entire Middle East. Lebanon, Syria, Iran, Iraq with the nation of Israel and the nation of Egypt and Israel will just be one of three and there'll be a blessing in the midst of the land and God is going to cause the entire Middle East to turn to him. Assyria, Egypt and Israel. I mean, can you imagine modern day Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Israel, and Egypt. Blessed is Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Now, one of the amazing ideas that comes with Isaiah 19 is that the last few verses actually describe when the kingdom of God fully comes upon the earth. What will happen in the last days? And that will begin with the nations of Egypt, Assyria, and Israel coming together, being united and worshiping the Lord. Think about that now. The most contentious place on earth. There's been more bloodshed in the Middle East, I dare to say over the last few thousand years than any place on the earth. And to think that God said, I'm going to bring all of Abraham's descendants, the ones through Isaac, the ones through Ishmael. I'm going to bring the cousins back together, the Egyptians, the Iranians, the Iraqis, the Lebanese, the Syrians, the Egyptians, and the Israelis, and they're all going to come under the banner of the Messiah of Israel. 
and he will call those three together a blessing in the midst of the earth. Wow. This future event that we're seeing unfold here in Isaiah 19 is completely connected to God's sovereign activity in Egypt. And Egypt, by the way, listen to this, will serve as a prototype for all the other nations of the earth, or, or a lot of them. Because he zealously, God fervently acts to bring about transformation in the hearts of the Egyptian people to agree with his eternal plan of redemption. He wants the Egyptians and the Syrians and the Israelis to come into agreement with his eternal plan of redemption. And he wants those three to come into agreement with his kingdom purpose kingdom purposes in and through the Jewish people. It will start with the Jewish people. It will come through Christ. It will come through the Jewish people, but it's not just for the Jewish people. The Lord is going to heal the biggest family division in the history of the world, the biggest family rift, the biggest family division, and he's going to put a highway recognizing there's a connection in the Middle East and Abraham's descendants are coming back to the same table to eat together and worship the one true God. as the Messiah will rule over his holy hill of Zion in the land of Israel forever. God will once and for all heal Abraham's divided family in the earth. Think about what's happening in the news right now and think about October the 7th and think about all these terrible things and all the suffering uh, that is happening right now. Think about that all that is on the news right now and, and the people who were kidnapped and the people who were terrorized and the people who, who have been dislocated out of their homes. Uh, I'm talking about all of the people involved. And there's coming a time where God is going to unite Egypt with Israel. Egypt, who in the days of Moses enslaved the Israelites. Egypt, led by Pharaoh, enslaved for hundreds of years the Israelites. And Egypt and Israel are going to come together to worship the one true God. But why? Well, it's because God wanted to remind the human race that no matter how bad and bleak and, and divided and war-torn it looks, and there is war coming, it's already here. Uh, but, but no matter how bleak and how war-torn and divided it looks, God is saying, I will bring together these nations, Assyria, Egypt, and Israel. I'll bring Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Israel, and Egypt, and they'll all come together under the banner of the Lord, and they'll no longer be fighting over their ethnic uh, or their religious differences. And God said, I'm going to prove to you, here's a promise, here's Here's how you know this will happen. I'm going to preserve a monument in the land of Israel. An altar to himself in Egypt to recall all of Egypt's history in God's plan. God has and will interweave Egypt's history their great ancestry, their great ancestral narrative, and he's going to weave it in the tapestry of God's kingdom, God's eternal purposes. And God said, I promise you the day's going to come when I'm going to say, blessed are Egypt, my people. There's going to come a day when Israel will only be one of three, like we read. And here's the sign that that will happen. Joseph the son of Jacob, 400 years in Egypt. All of these biblical facts point to God's involvement in the earth. And notice, I want to go back again and read verse 19. In that day, 
there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they'll cry to the Lord because of the oppressors. He'll send them a savior and a mighty one and he will deliver them. Whoa. Then the Lord will be known to Egypt. And the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and will make sacrifice and offering. Yes, they'll make a vow to the Lord and perform it. And the Lord said, here is the evidence. I'm going to allow there to be something in the land of Egypt that will stand the test of time that will be an altar originally built to honor me, an altar and a pillar built to God in early, early, early human history. The altar to the Lord in Egypt, I believe, the Great Pyramid is the pillar and the altar, I personally believe. And it's the sign of the Isaiah 19 promise of God healing the divided Abraham family and healing the Middle East. Now, I know many of you right now are thinking, oh, but I thought ancient aliens had that covered, the pyramid. Or I thought it contained all the tombs of the pharaohs. Or I thought that it had to do with the Nephilim building it and blah, blah, blah. Hold on just a minute. I'm not saying that throughout its history that the occult and paganism and all these things did not pervert it. But the Lord's saying, I'm going to make sure in that day, whenever that time comes, that that altar, that, that pillar, think about it, that pillar, that altar will still be there as a sign. When Isaiah 19 was written, the pyramids were there. When the day comes, when the whole Middle East is healed, they'll still be there. When Isaiah wrote Isaiah 19, the great pyramid of Giza was already standing. It's just true. And God said there's going to be a sign of God's promises of healing the divide in Abraham's family, reuniting Palestinian with Jew and Arab with Jew. The great pyramid in Egypt was actually called Pahanak. Did you know it actually means house of Enoch? You say, yeah, but I heard this group and I heard they did this there and they worshiped the false gods there. I'm sure they probably did. Just like they have in every culture and nation on the earth where churches now stand. House of Enoch is what it's called and referred to. Perhaps because it was designed by Enoch as a memorial uh, to the Lord, built by Enoch, its own internal dating system seems to point to 2170 or 2141 BC as its prophetic reference point. So let's just for a minute presume it was built sometime around that, 2170 to 2141 BC. If so, this was likely built by Shem, Noah's son. You remember back in those days, in that time period, the population of the earth was, was a lot less than it, it is now. Even, even a lot less then in the days of Enoch and Shem and Noah than it was when the days when Jesus walked the earth. It was likely built by Shem with knowledge that had been received by Enoch. Enoch was the one who walked with God, Remember? And he was not, for God took him. Now, the Great Pyramid of Giza has puzzled many people for years because they just didn't have the technology back then to be able to lift those giant stones and make that architecture precise and exact the way that it is. That's the reason why it stands as one of the ancient wonders of the world. And many people have written it off because some in the, the occult and some pagan religions and some who worship other gods have pointed to it. But I want you to know, I believe the Bible points to it. And it's the Bible saying this is a sign to you that's going to stand the test of time. Now, the pyramid has fascinated people for millennia 
It predates Scripture itself. Think about that. Joseph and Moses would have known about the Pyramid of Giza. They would have seen it. They would have been around it because they both lived in Egypt. Moses would have seen the Great Pyramid. Later, Isaiah the prophet received revelation about God's future plans for the Middle East. And he tied it to his divine plan to heal Abraham's divided family in Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah 19, 19. In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord near its border between upper and lower Egypt, which is, by the way, right where the Great Pyramid stands. And it will become a sign. You say, well, for all these hundreds of years, it's not been a testimony to God. No, but it will become. The Lord has a way of taking things that the devil has used and sanctifying them and cleansing them and say, hey, I can use that. He did it with me, and he's done it with you. It will become a sign. It will become a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they'll cry to the Lord because of the oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a champion, and he will deliver them. What a promise to the Egyptian people. One of three. Now, if you continue reading, Isaiah tells us about Egypt's conversion to the one true God of Israel, resulting in this beautiful divine announcement, quote, blessed is Egypt my people, unquote, verse 25. Did you know that the Egyptians are actually prophetically going to be God's people, just like the Arab and Palestinian people? The Assyrians, the Egyptians, and the Israelites. The altar to the Lord is already there in the midst of Egypt, and the border of upper and lower Egypt is right where it sits. It's located at Giza. Giza literally means the border. Now, if you take Hebrew letters forming the two verses above, Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20, how many of you know that the Hebrew language, each letter has a numeric value? It does. Each letter has a numeric value. If you take verse 19 and 20 that talks about the pyramid, the altar, the, the pillar to the Lord that will be evidence and proof of God's end time plan for the Middle East of saving and uniting Abraham's broken family. If you add the numeric value of those verses, Isaiah 19, verse 19 and 20, those two verses, and you add them all together, the numeric Hebrew value of those verses equals 5,449. This happens to be the height of the Great Pyramid in inches. That is, in pyramid inches, which is its own internal measuring system that's very, very close to the length of our own inch. Perhaps it's no coincidence that the old Coptic language of Egypt, still used by the Coptic believers in Egypt today, their word for pyramid is Urim Midden, which means revelation measures. Ask the Coptic Christians. It measured both time and space. And so it literally can be seen as this gigantic sundial because its shadow marks the shortest and longest day of the year. Now listen to this. This is profound. Each side of the pyramid is 365.242 sacred cubits because it was meant to express the precise length of a solar year, 365.242 days. The pyramid was also designed by weight to be 1,000 trillionth of the weight of the earth itself. Physicists tell us that if you could weigh the earth, it would weigh 5.3 billion trillion tons. I don't know how they know that. 
The Great Pyramid is calculated to weigh 5.3 million tons. 5.3 billion trillion tons is what the earth weighs. 5.3 million tons. So basically the pyramid is a miniature earth. The pyramid is also, it is that sign, an altar, a witness to the Lord in the land of Egypt representing the promises of God. It is a mini representation of the earth itself in weight and height and its sides reflect the earth's precise rotation around the sun because the solar year, 365.242 cubits, are, are the measurement of each side of the pyramid. Isn't that incredible? In other words, the Great Pyramid is God's great altar made of earthly material. According to Exodus chapter 20, verse 24, you shall make an altar of earth for me. Now, we even see this in the Mosaic Law. The law is an expression of the, the mind and thoughts of God, and it reveals how he deals with his creation. And so God, as we know, he will follow his own law. And it's for this, the rules by which all of God's creation functions. He not only commanded Israel to build an altar of earth, but he himself built an altar of earth in the midst of the land of Egypt, which prophetically represents the world. So there's a sign, there's a token in the land of Egypt that's a mini representation of the entire earth. And God says, just remember what I'm going to do for Egypt, Israel, and the Assyrians is what I want to do for the whole earth. And here's the evidence and proof. Now, the pyramid has a square base. How many of you have seen it before, right? I know most of you have. Now, some people say, how is it like the earth? Because the earth is around. How could the pyramid represent the earth in its shape? Well, there's a reason for that. The pyramid's base is not exactly square as it appears. It looks square, but it's actually slightly curved. The curve is precisely the curvature of the earth. In fact, because it's curved, you can measure its base in two ways. Listen to this. How do you measure its base? Well, if you measure straight across from corner to corner, you get 365.242 cubits, which is the price number... Uh, the, the precise number of days in a solar year, but if you measure the pyramid along its curvature, it's 365.246 cubits. This is what's known as a side real year. The time it takes for the fixed stars, wherever the stars are tonight, that length of time for it to return to the exact same position later, a year later, as viewed from the earth. That's a side real year. And it's only 20 minutes longer than a solar year. But God included both years in the measurement. Now, to me, it's incredible that the pyramid would be built with a slight curvature that would not only reveal the curvature of the earth, but also provide the measures of a side real year. It is truly an altar of the Lord, a pillar dedicated to God in the midst of the land of Egypt for end time purposes. Now the pyramid has various passageways that slope at an angle of 26 degrees, 18 minutes and 9.7 seconds. If you take a map, now listen to this. If you take a map, and draw on an east-west line through the Great Pyramid. And another, I, I love this, I really want you to catch this. The east-west line through the Great Pyramid and another one from the Pyramid to Bethlehem, which is where Jesus was born. The angle formed by those lines is exactly 26 degrees, 18 minutes, and 9.63 seconds, which is almost precisely the same as the passage slope in the pyramid. In other words, the slope of the passage 
the direction, the, the, the exact way that it, it's pointing to Bethlehem. The pyramid points to Bethlehem as if it's pointing out the birthplace of Egypt's Messiah. When they cry out to him, long before it was recorded in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 that out of Bethlehem the Messiah, the King of Israel, would be born. Long before Micah pointed to it, the Lord had it set up even in the pyramid to point to Bethlehem. You see, the pyramid itself, it's puzzled people. Many people kind of get eerie by it. It's like, how did this get here? They didn't have technology like that back then. Well, it had to have come from some sort of supernatural or divine source. The pyramid is missing something, though. If you actually look at close pictures up of the pyramid, it, it should come to a perfect point, but it doesn't. It comes up almost, and then it's flat across it's missing a capstone. It's missing a capstone. Somebody say capstone. And strangely enough, this omission was pre-planned when it was built. It's as if this missing capstone was meant to prophesy something else that we needed to know. In fact, we see it referenced in Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. The stone which the builders rejected means the builders didn't include it in the building of that. Just like the world hasn't included Jesus yet. But the head, the capstone's about to come down in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that stone which the builders rejected has become and will become the head of the corner. The head of the corner describes the capstone of the pyramid. It is the headstone, but also the corner of where the four sides of the pyramid meet. So the truth is, whoever built the pyramid did this on purpose to build it off-center by 286.1 pyramid inches, which means the capstone cannot fit on its head because it's made off-center. The number 286.1 is known as, in math, the displacement factor. It's also known as the rectification factor because it's what it takes to rectify the problem. It reveals how Adam's sin put everything off center. Ultimately requiring Christ himself to only be the thing that can complete it or perfect it. At the same time, God's solution to the problem began 286.1 Sabbath rest years after Adam's sin. When according to the historical book of Jasher, chapter 13, verse 9, Abram first went to Canaan at the age of 55. Jasher said that when Abram was 70, he returned to Haran for five years, and then God told him to go back to Canaan, and that's where the Bible picks up the story in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 4. I'm here to tell you tonight, God will heal the Middle East. You say, it's an irreconcilable problem. Uh, you know, many are trying to provide a two-state solution. That's not going to work. It's, got, it's an impossible situation to rectify without the rectification factor. And that is the stone which the builders rejected. The chief corner stone. He's going to come down and fix and complete the world that's incomplete without him. And that pyramid that stands in the Middle East and has stood for thousands of years and outlasted the rest of the ancient world that was destroyed by the flood. Think about that. The rest of the world that was destroyed by other empires, other invasions. God says there's going to be a sign that the whole world is going to see and one day that sign will be sanctified back to me. 
and that sign will stand there through the test of time to point to the whole world. God is promising, one day I will heal the broken world. Once the principalities and ancestral demonic powers are exposed and removed, God will heal the humankind family. But first, he's going to start with Abraham's family and then work his way out. And if God heals the Middle East, if he heals the Jews and the Palestinians, if he heals the, the Arabs and the Jews, if God does that himself and heals Abraham's family, the descendants of Isaac and the descendants of Ishmael, why right now are there Palestinians flowing, coming into Egypt at its border, creating a crisis in and of itself? I believe, friends, we are watching prophecy start to unfold before our very eyes. And it is the mystery and the miracle of the Middle East. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how God is going to do it, but he's going to heal Abraham's family. And the proof of it is in the pyramid of Giza. How many are you looking forward to God to heal Abraham? How many of you need God to heal your family? We need God to heal the American family. We're more polarized than ever. We need God to heal the human race. We need God to, to heal. He already tore down the wall between Jew and Gentile. But the truth is, many people are still operating a, 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 in a thinking that is a thinking before the cross. And God wants to testify that one day the Assyrians and the Egyptians and the Israelites will all worship together in agreement and worship the one true and living God. The whole Middle East. What's left of it will turn to the Lord. And Jesus will rule and reign from Jerusalem as the king of Israel, but also the savior of Egypt and the savior of Assyria or Iran and Iraq and Lebanon and Syria, where all of the tension in the world is right now that we're beginning to see unfold. I believe it's eschatological. It's literally Ezekiel 38. The potential for Ezekiel 38, it lines up really easy. I'm not saying that that's what it is, but you could see how Ezekiel 38 could literally unfold right before our eyes and God is saying there's a reason why everything's going awry in the Middle East it's because the devil knows where God's purposes are and he knows what God's going to do in the Middle East so what will the devil want to do I'm just going to I know it's 914 but I, I, a few things I want to share with you and I believe there's some people here and I just want everybody to relax just a minute. Nobody's going to get exposed or embarrassed or anything like that. But I believe the Lord wants to speak prophetically right now. Many of us have had dreams about terrorism. I shared with you the dream that I had on the night of October uh, 7th or 8th, whichever day it was. I have it written down. And... Last night, as I was sleeping, I had a dream in which I was walking through this tunnel, and I stepped in on the other side of the tunnel, and I realized I was standing there with someone else, and I was watching a dream they had unfold. And it was this, somebody here, I saw by the Holy Spirit prophetically your dream and that as you dreamed that there was going to be a terrorist attack on Christmas Day. And I know that person is here. Whoever you are, if you had that dream of, of a terrorist attack on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, right around there, wherever you are, please raise your hand or stand. Because I want to I wanna speak something prophetically over you. I know the person is here. You, okay, over there. 
Oh, Lord. You know, Michael the archangel uh, is the one who fights for the Jewish people. And I want to tell you, there's something significant about that. I just saw uh, the name uh, Michael in regards to uh, the archangel, but I believe that name is relevant uh, for you as well in some unique way. But I want to I want to tell you this. Now, there's no way I could know that dream, right? That I, that I know of. I don't. I don't oh, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this I couldn't one. know. That. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord wants you to know that He's called you to be a prophetic intercessor, wow. and He gave you that dream. Obviously, somebody prayed, and that terrorist attack didn't happen. But the Lord is also going to start giving you dreams and more dreams and more specific dreams of where the enemy is planning other terrorist attack in the world, but particularly in this nation. Wow. Yeah. And he's going to, it's going to, you're going to see one that has to do with New York. Okay. But I don't believe it was in this particular one, but it was. Uh, a, a terrorist attack yeah. and I want you to know that the Lord is speaking right now to tell you your prayers make a difference and that's Come one on. of the reasons why this terrorist attack didn't happen mm, good, good. five days ago mm. how, how recent did you have <clears throat> the dream about <clears throat> the Christmas day uh, I believe this was 2021 or what's it 2022 or 20, I think 2021 or tw no, 2022. It's 2022. Mm -hmm. About a year and a half. Uh, okay. A couple years ago. Well, you're a prayer. You're a prophetic. He's going to give you revelation, and then you're going to pray to stop it. And I believe he's even going to give you prophetic intelligence. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And there's a company of people tonight that God's going to begin to speak to you so specifically and your vision is going to become so clear that you're going to know something's about to happen before you get there. You're going to dream about the next day the night before. That. Yeah, you had it too? Yeah, how recent did you have it? It was around Christmas and you wrote it on a note, but the note's not here. I was watching, like, it, was, it seemed like a college campus, and I saw, like, it was all ladies, they were lying on the floor. And there was like a terrorist attack going on, and they were lying on the floor. I was watching it, and I began to think like something bad is going to happen to them. So I saw one of, the, one of the ladies stood up, and she was running to her car, and she wanted to open the door, but it seemed like she was trying, and then she was on her phone trying to do something. I was watching it, and then I stood behind her, and I could see my reflection on her phone, and wow. then I just like. Well, you saw the reflection in your phone. She was calling for help. Yeah. But just as you lead those prayer walks on prayer on, on college campuses, just as you, South Carolina, you're going to impact a college in South Carolina. You're going to impact South Carolina. You, you, is it university? Or there's a yeah. university. That's right. University of South Carolina. Is that where you go? Yeah. All right. Amen. Are you are you with him? Yeah. All right. Lord, I just pray you both have a prophetic grace upon Amen. you. You both are dreamers, but you're about to be even more Amen. of a dreamer. Amen. Lord, I release that grace of dreaming prophetically Amen. so that prophetic intercession can come. Amen. Lord, I pray just like the prophet Samuel and just like the prophet Nathan, God, they're going to, their eyes are going to be open and they're going to walk in the revelatory realm. Amen. Lord, I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yeah, I just felt it right there. Just like that. Yep. You begin to intercede right now. Oh, let the glory come on her too, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel right now 
Job 33, 15, that the Lord seals instructions to men as they lay upon their bed at nights. I believe God right now is, there is, if somebody will reach out for it, the grace for dreaming, dreams from the Lord. Just like these two young men, uh, you're going to have, you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have an encounter with the cloud of witnesses. And in fact, the prophet Samuel and Elijah are going to pray. And I know this sounds so crazy for some people to believe, but there's going to be a direct impartation. I believe touching. We were in church, we were in church um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, like I was worshiping, we were leading like worship. And then when we went back to our seat, he asked me if I could pray for him. And I saw like the prophet Samuel, like bringing him into like it's like his school. You're kidding. And he he saw like his garment, yes. like Samuel. And then a couple of days ago, I was just telling him, um, um, I'm a lady led me to um, Dr. Gwen Shaw. Like I was telling him like a couple of days ago that I was led to Dr. Gwen Shaw, and she was like she was going to enroll me into our school. So when you said cloud of witnesses, I was. How, how long ago was this Samuel thing, though, where you saw the prophet uh, Samuel? It was like probably like four Sundays ago. Four Sundays like, ago. Yeah. And that's your name, too, isn't it? Yeah, Samuel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Samuel's anointing. And the, Lord, I pray that they will be used in East Africa. I see connections there. God's going to use you in the nation of Kenya. He's also going to use you in Guyana. I also see that nation. I don't know uh, why I just saw that nation, but watch for that in the future. But the nation of Kenya, you probably have connections there or know people there. You're from Kenya. Are you related to, to them? Oh, no. Well, okay. Well, that's all right. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name. I'm just picking something up there. You see, you, this, you pick something up off the Spirit. Uh, you spoke up, so I just assume you're related. But I think that there's a grace for missions. God will save Africa. God loves Africa. God will save Africa. And just like a few Sundays ago, he had this encounter of seeing the prophet Samuel come to Samuel. I pray for that greater release of uh, an impartation of that prophetic grace in Jesus' name. You're going to also know when it's time to pray for people. You're going to feel f heat in your hands. You're going to feel heat in your hands. If you'll walk pure and righteous and holy before God and keep yourself in purity and integrity, God will use you to shake the nations. To live up to his name. also um, wrote this down also I believe this is also another uh, somebody here on, on, on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and I, I don't know why <laughs> it was too but you had a, a car accident on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day it's like right at that time you've had a car accident I sense the person's spirit. It's somewhere like over over here. Um, I know you're here. You've had a car accident on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Where are you? Don't be afraid to stay in wherever you are. God's got something for you. I know that person's here. This isn't guesswork. Please don't miss what God has for you right now. Wherever you are, if you've had a car wreck on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, Okay, but it wasn't re this year. Yeah, but it, okay. So Lord, I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's right around that time frame. I mean, I just bumped her bumper, but okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna stay standing, but I'm gonna wait for somebody else. Over here, was it this year? Ten years ago, and for you, it was last year. Okay, isn't that something? They all start standing up, and they, nobody stood for like two minutes. And see, when you get when you're prophetic like that, you can't back down. If you know that you've heard from God, okay, somebody that 
one of you that were in that, the uh, car accident, you had a back injury and whiplash. Whichever one of you it was, this is the first one I want to pray for. You've had a reoccurring back injury and the Lord, you over there. And this was, was this recent or the year before or what? It was recent, but then there was something that happened prior to that as well. Another car accident that goodness. happened on my fifth wedding anniversary. And then oh, my, my husband, goodness. Then I, my husband died. I, I, I missed that. See? I, I said I had a, a car accident on my fifth anniversary, and then a couple months later, my husband died, I think, from injuries sustained in the accident. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you was in the same. Uh, yeah, then I was in an accident on the Friday before Christmas. I, I see a gray car. I don't know. Yeah. Silver yeah. Volvo. The most recent one or the one? Most recent one. Yeah. Yeah. I see, yeah, that, that's gray, silver. And then I see even back further than that, I see a black one. I don't know. Yes. There was a, is that the yes, previous one? September 24th. That's yes. thus saith the Lord. Yes. I'm not, this isn't guesswork. Yeah. There, is there any way I could know this? No. There, no. It's not public information. I couldn't no. know that. No. Uh, I don't think we've ever spoken as far as I know. Uh, just at Shekinah, but nothing to do with cars or anything Okay, like we, that. but we don't know each other. Or we've not talked ahead of time or anything yeah, like that. No, not at I all. I just say that just for, yeah. uh, to build their faith and yours. Yes. I just see... There's somebody is supposed to pray with you. It's like a Kathy or, or a Kathleen. Uh, there's somebody here, a Kathy or a Kathleen is supposed to come and pray with her right now. Wherever you are, come up here. I believe it's in this same section. Yeah, right there it is. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm recruiting her help, okay? My name is Kathy, but I don't know her. Yeah, well, uh, you don't have to know her. This is okay. This is okay. You're going to know her by the Spirit, though. That's how we're all going to learn to know each other, by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Chris, she has a sweater on with a heart, and since my husband died, the Lord's been sending me hearts, like in tea bags, <laughs> like, like even, even in, like, I said to him one day, Lord, you haven't sent me a heart, like, in a week, and I'm really lonely. And I went to clean the kitty box, and I have two plastic cups. I scooped the clean litter, and it made a shape of a heart. And, and then I was at Shekinah, and I usually give the homeless, like, a bag with, like, a snack and water and stuff and a track in it. And I didn't go fast enough. And when I was walking back to my car, I was apologizing to the Lord. And I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry. It took me so long to go, you know, be kind to this gentleman that was walking on the sidewalk. And I look on the ground at Shekinah, and there is a perfect heart in the asphalt. Wow. And then I call out a woman by the name of Kathleen. Kathy. 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 And she, she has, has a perfect heart on her sweater. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Those are little tokens the Lord yeah. sends us. Yeah. Now, to you, that did... I, I guarantee you, nobody else in this room, you can say that's just random, nobody no, else in this room, hearts random. speak to you. No. no maybe maybe random. one other or, or two or three other, but that, yes. that spoke oh. something. And the Lord gave me a name of a woman who was wearing something that is how the Lord speaks you to her. You've got to tell him this. Tell him that. That's how God speaks to me, too. <laughs> he, he, he puts hearts places. Give, my uncle gives me hearts. Anybody that has a word for me always says, God loves you so much. That's how God speaks to me. Uh. Oh, sorry. I just think it's funny because I always sign my name with a heart. <laughs> An XO. <laughs> well, the Lord's about to heal her heart. 
fill that void in emptiness and loneliness and nobody will ever replace this person but God has a way of healing your back and healing your hips also in the name of Jesus and healing you of inflammation of the joints and arthritis and all that's got to go in Jesus name and I see him regulating also uh, the hormones in your body he's just correcting I see him flowing through your blood right now in the name of Jesus and we break the power of any sadness discouragement or oppression or depression she's got the joy of the Lord fire fire hearts that's so crazy February is significant too for for one of you you're born in February well it got you are God's Valentine tonight you were born in February God brought you here to speak to you yes yes he sent me here yeah yeah and it's yeah. like I it's got something to do with this whole thing started off with about Christmas right the, the wreck on or right around that yeah. time oh, and it, yeah. it's oh, like and my husband's favorite cat got sick just before Christmas and I brought him for surgery and I found him dead on Christmas morning my gosh yeah it's been a rough I ride. just keep hearing that some, that the first Noel I don't know why the first Noel I can't I, I don't know look up the words of that song I believe there's a message in it for you okay but I believe there's a grace for healing because these areas for which you've dealt with on these tragedies around Christmas God is going to give you authority in those areas to minister to others and help others. I receive it. Yes. I, I receive see the heart. Oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, that's like a real heart. Afterwards, I will show you the picture from Shekinah. So you actually took a picture of it. Of course. So it's I not have just... a whole album of photographs of hearts that the Lord gave me. Matter of fact, the... He gives them to me a lot in round tea bags. I'll put it in the microwave, take the teacup out. And there's like an indentation of a heart in the tea bag. Okay, so the other night I ran out of round tea bags. I'm, I'm good with listening to this, seriously. <laughs> the other night I ran out of round tea bags. I'm like, okay, Jesus, if you're my husband, let me see you do it out of this tea bag shaped like a pyramid. And I was thinking about you because of your speech that you did at Shekinah, your 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 message about message about the pyramids I mentioned the pyramids at, there and yep. you mentioned it tonight again and I was like okay Jesus let me see you do it with this tea bag he did now then, you may say this is crazy talk but I'm going to tell you you're starting to hear right now how you can be conscious and aware and present in the moment to watch for how God is going to speak in your language I'm not talking about English or Spanish. I'm talking about shapes and colors. And the name of a person he gives me to come up and pray for you has a heart on her. Yes. Kathy or Kathleen or whatever it was. I, I just, it's speaking to me as well, seeing that heart on your uh, sweater there. Because I feel like somebody's heart is blackened and darkened. But the Lord is going to lift that uh, darkness off of your heart and free you from that wherever you are receive it now in the name of Jesus yeah you believe it's you is that what you said yeah, yeah. yeah I've been so sad since my husband passed yeah he was the love of my life well may the Lord be the lifter of your soul and bear your burdens in Jesus name I tell you, you're going to have a new life after this night. A new life. Hallelujah. We're about a month and a half early for Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> he's already gave you the heart, and he's already healing your heart and touching your heart. Thank you. Breaking Thank you, you free of that darkness in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I want to um, just... And I have Heart thing. Yes, that's okay. There was a One gentleman more. that rented a plane and flew up to Shekinah for a service. And then he wanted to come up again when you were ministering. 
and it was foggy. So he called me up, he said, don't pick us up at the airport because he flies into Fox right near Shekinah. He said, I'm fogged in, I can't drive. And the Holy Spirit kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, ask him if he has a car. I knew he had a car. I'm like, do you have a car? Yeah. Well, why don't you drive? Because you're only in San Diego. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he drove up, and he was like so filled with the glory. He was like glowing when he walked into the, into the sanctuary. And then I saw him afterwards. We were in the fellowship mall. And I was telling his two friends. He brought a husband and wife with him. And I was telling them the heart story and showing her the pictures. And, and we're talking about like how Jesus talks to people. And she grabs my arm, and she's pointing down at my teacup at Shekinah. The Lord had given me a heart at Shekinah in my paper cup. Now, see, when you need <laughs> tokens like that, when you're desperate, it may seem far out for you, but the Lord, will he speaks your language, oh, your yeah. love language. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I want anybody and everybody yeah. that's dealing with a heavy heart in this season, loneliness, sadness, discouragement, sadness. Some of you have lost people. Some of you, I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you see this heaviness and this loneliness and this sadness, Lord. And we just break this off of them now and let them come into the new year with their countenance lifted, with a whole new lease on life. Lift their hearts, Lord. Change their hearts. Write your law upon their hearts. And thank you, Lord, for bringing forth the person that had the heart on their shirt to speak to her through this obvious, clear way that you speak to her all the time. And I pray that the joy of the Lord will come in the room right now. I want every one of you that are standing right now. In, I'm going to pray right now in Jesus' name. And you're going to, you got to yield to it, but there's going to be fresh joy come on you. The joy of the Lord. The laughter of the Holy Spirit. Leaping for joy. Joy! The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive that joy. Joy, 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 unspeakable. Joy, 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 unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Holy Spirit, move across this room and touch every person that needs the joy of the Lord back. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah, let the joy come in, let it come in, let it come in. In Jesus' name. Glory! Holy Spirit, fire! Come on, some of you need to pray till the smile comes back. Some of you need to pray until the smile comes back. Till the laughter comes back. He is the lifter of your head. Fire! Fire! Bless her, Lord. Rebaptize her. Let it get all over you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, it, I smile, I promise it doesn't hurt. Shobradonge zandela batate le monde tekiai. Woo! <laughs>
Yay! Yay! Fire! Glory! Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every one of you that need a fresh dose of the joy of the Lord, I want you to come up here right now. Just come right up here. Come right up here. I want to pray for you right now. God is going to release something. If you'll come with expectation and obedience in your heart, God wants to release something in this room. The joy, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy. Uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. She lands next to somebody at the altar. Hold that heart up. That's a, this is, uh, you wasn't going to wear them and you're standing next to it. The, this is crazy. It's a heart necklace. Wow. Amen. Well, Lord, we just pray that what Cheryl's getting tonight. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to send forth bowling balls of glory through the crowd. People can think I'm crazy. I don't care. You can think what you want to think. There is a tangible, substantive God. A pillar of fire, a bowling ball of fire, whatever you want. I want to offend the religious mind to reveal the heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over every spirit of oppression and sadness and darkness and hopelessness and despair and suicide and loss of hope. And I break it now with the sword of the Spirit. I sever those cords holding on to you now with the sword of the Spirit. In the name of the Lord. I'm going to throw a bowling ball of glory through here. And it's if you all yield to it, it's going to go and knock the pin pongs over. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come. He's the lifter of her head. He's the lifter of her head. No matter what you've been through, no matter the loss, the experience, no matter what the enemy has stolen, killing, or destroyed, God is able to restore, renew, and rebuild and to fill that vacancy in your heart. He's healing your soul right now, and he's healing your body as well. Loss. Abandonment. There's people in this room who are being liberated from all those things. In Jesus' name, I wish a holy laughter would come over this crowd. Engage the Holy Spirit. A holy laughter in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can get healed while you're laughing. You can get delivered while you're laughing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. This salvation is joy unspeakable and full of glory.
just whack. Yeah. Come on, we've gotten too formalized. God wants to break out in this place. God wants to send forth an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Come on, if you're determined to get your vision back for 2024, if you're determined to get your joy back, shout yeah! Spirit's moving on children tonight. Fire, 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 fire. Holy Ghost whack! Yay. Whack! Freedom, 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 discouragement, darkness, oppression, that fogginess that some of you are dealing with daily. Freedom, freedom, freedom! not seen a child laugh and then get laid out in the spirit like that in a long time. That's real. Let me tell you something. That's real. Open your mouth and give praise to God. He'll fill you with those beautiful languages that adorn His name. Yeah, let it come out, son. That's right. Let it come out. That's it. Just, just 60 more seconds. I want the Lord to have his full way. I want him to do whatever he wants to do. There's a man in here. Your name is Steve, and you've got a lower back problem. The Lord is healing you right now. Where are you? Shout, if I call you out, lift your voice and shout. Right there. Receive it right now. Receive that healing fire. You're going to begin to feel warmth go down your back. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, release. Receive your healing right now. Pinch nerves are being corrected. Ah, discs are being restored that had deteriorated. Healing in the name of Jesus.
Wait for that sensation. You're going to feel that sensation of warmth in your back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You feel it. You feel it. Is the microphone on? Yes. Okay. Uh, he feel, yes, okay. sir. You feel it. Yes, sir. You feel that heat. I do. I want you to see if there's a difference right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. Feels a lot better. Feels a lot better. We're going to keep praying until it's all better. Amen. In Jesus' name, be healed. Yes. I hear a doctor saying something like that the potential of being some sort of surgery or something. I just cancel that out. And I say that's... Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I need, I need multiple foot surgeries. Say what? I need multiple foot surgeries. Multiple foot, foot surgeries. surgeries. Foot surgery. The Lord just heal his feet right now. Yes. I, I see the flat-footedness. I see the Lord correcting that. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, flat-footedness. Yes. But I also I strangely see neuropathy, like little prickly, needly pain sometimes uh, in your feet as well. Does that make sense? The Lord's yes, going to heal you right now. Yes. I, not just a whole body makeover. In Hallelujah. the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the glory of God. For the glory of yes. God. There's an Amy in here. You deal with allergies and asthma. I see the Lord healing you right now. Allergies and asthma. Wherever you're at, shout. Receive it right now. Amy, in the name of Jesus, take in a deep breath. I don't know these people. I've never spoken to them, but the Lord is speaking to me. Take a deep breath in. All the way out in Jesus' name. Yes! In Jesus' name, breathe it in again. Breathe it in again. Deep breath in. You're going to feel Holy Spirit electricity go through you right now. As he expands your lung, I see one of them having some kind of damage, and it's just like there's a repair coming right there. In Jesus' name, the capillaries are opening up, the arteries in your lungs are being, they're expanding now. In Jesus' name, you're going to feel a warmth in your rib cage and in your chest. Fire! Holy Spirit, fire is healing Amy right now of asthma and allergy conditions in Jesus' name. There is a Deborah. You have bad knees. You have uh, knee problems with bone on bone. Wherever you are, yell out at me. Deborah, right back there. Get your healing now, Deborah. The Holy Ghost is all over you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Susan, who battles with migraine headaches. Where are you, Susan? Yell out wherever you are. Susan, you deal with headaches. Where are you? I know she's in the room. I'm on the way. Okay, there you are. Thank God. See, you just got to wait on it. God heals Susan right now. Break the power of these headaches and the triggers. The certain uh, environments, certain sounds, certain smells even that, that trigger. We just break that now in the name of Jesus. There's a David in the room and you've got a, you, you have heart, a heart condition. And the Lord is healing your heart right now. There's a part of your heart that is not... David, is that... Okay, somebody was raising there. Uh, there's somebody else in here. A David with a heart condition. Where are you, David. God wants to heal you now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we just pray. Don't hesitate, folks. Seriously. God is, you are on his mind. You're in his thoughts. There, right there, in the name of Jesus. You're going to feel warmth come in the middle of your heart, David, right now. Holy Ghost fire, healing in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. There's somebody in the room, and you're a dreamer, and you're named Apley. Your name is Joseph, but as a child, you dealt with nightmares. Where are you? As a child, you dealt with nightmares, but God has called you to get past the nightmares so that you can be Joseph the dreamer. Receive it now, that fresh grace. I am speaking under the utterance and oracle of the Holy Spirit of God. He is speaking now to individuals. You're coming into your purpose. All the things that have held you back, God's breaking it. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's a Zach or a Zachary. A Zach or a Zachary. Where are you? The Lord wants you to know it's not by might nor by power, but he's going to solve it and do it by his spirit. Wherever Zach is, the Lord is doing that for you right now. Back there, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord wants you to know that unsolvable problems for man are completely solvable for him. And so, Lord, let the seven golden candlesticks. It's not by might nor by power I see the building of this wall. Uh, just like in the, in the scripture there. And I just speak over you in Jesus Christ's name that the glory of God and the power of God will work on your behalf and you'll come into fullness and readiness for the calling and purpose that God has called you and ordained you into. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a George in the room and you deal with some sort of affliction in your blood. George, I don't know where you are. Okay, right there. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask for a healing for George right now of this condition in his blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew, wherever you're at in the room, Matthew, I want to tell you, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Matthew 28, 19. I don't know where Matthew is, but you've got a calling upon your life. And even though sometimes you may be soft-spoken or timid, God is going to release a spirit of boldness upon you to share your testimony and free you from any timidity. And you're going to be graced with the Holy Spirit to speak the, and utter the words of spirit and life. You've had a calling since you were a child, and you've not always embraced it, but tonight you're getting a second chance for a first impression. I don't know where you are, Mark. Mark, it's the Bible names right now. Mark, you're in this room, and the Lord wants you to know in his name you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. In his name you'll cast out demons. I don't know where Mark or Marcus is. Where are you, Mark? All right. All right. Trifecta. Everywhere, everywhere. Lord, I just pray for that healing grace. In my name, they shall cast out demons. Deliverance grace. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Healing grace. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. The gift of tongues. In my name, they shall take up serpents. Now, don't get any funny ideas. That's accident prevention safety. It's called Holy Ghost insurance. Let the glory of God release that over you tonight. Yeah. Holy Spirit fire. Glory to God. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's still something all over you. Right there, there's something all over you. The Holy Spirit. I just hear the Lord saying He's come tonight to show you a token that He's going to be more real to you than He's ever been before. And any questions or doubts you've had before, He's going to soothe those things. And you're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt tonight that He is the Lord who heals you, but He is the I Am, the ever-present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah! One more time, lift up a shout of praise unto God!